Well, hello, my name is Ed Hawks, and this is the 18th edition of Listen Up Illinois. And today I have a first. I haven't had a storyteller uh, before, so today I have a storyteller who also happens to play guitar and sing. And her name is Linda Dust, and I'm happy to welcome her to the show. I believe you're going to you're going to start out with a story today, mm -hmm. Linda. And this this story really is true. I had somebody come up to me one time after I told it and said, "You know, I almost believe that really was your grandfather." It, it really is. It is your grandfather. <laughs> it really is. We called him Daddy Pete. We weren't sure why we called him that. His he wasn't our daddy and his name wasn't even Pete. His name was Earl Edgar Ward and he was my father, grandmother's my mother's grandfather, father, gosh, I can't believe I keep stuttering. Anyway, he was my mother's father. We didn't know him well. We lived in Illinois where my parents had moved after the birth of their first child, my oldest sister, and he lived in Oklahoma where my parents had met and married. Now back in the 50s and 60s, families didn't take big vacations, so we didn't see each other very much. But one time, my mother, who had been in ill health, was feeling well enough to take us to Oklahoma on the train, and we got to spend time with Daddy Pete. My sister and I wondered about him wearing a cowboy hat all the time, and we figured out it's the law, because it's Oklahoma. But as happens with families, Daddy Pete passed away, my, other, my grandmother passed away, my mother passed away, and we lost track of that whole side of the family until the email showed up about four years ago. My brother forwarded it to me with a note, who is this? And it said, hi, I think we're related. My sister was Betty Jean Ward. My dad was Pete Ward. I think you knew him as Daddy Pete. Well, I knew right away when I saw the signature that it was my Aunt Pam, the second child from Daddy Pete's second marriage. And I wrote back immediately and asked her to send me stories of Daddy Pete since we didn't know him and why did he wear that cowboy hat? I, and I asked her if it was because of his hairline, because my brothers, I'd noticed, had gone rapidly bald, unlike the, my father's side of the family. She sent an email back right away. She said, oh, yes, I recognize Daddy Pete's hairline in your brother's pictures, but he didn't wear that cowboy hat because of the baldness. It was because he really was a cowboy. He had roped calves in the rodeo until he was in his 50s, and he worked cattle on ranches most of his life. And that was the reason that he and my grandmother were divorced. She kind of thought he should get a real job in Oklahoma in the 30s. But they were friends for the rest of the, their lives. Well, I thought that was all very interesting, but I didn't really feel too connected to it. And so I asked her for some pictures. And a few days later, in my email inbox, there was a picture, but it was too big for my screen, so I had to scroll down and from the top of the picture I saw the tips of a horse's ears. And I scrolled down a little farther and saw his forelock and saw the top of a cowboy hat. And down farther the horse's eyes and face and the brim of the hat and the eyes of a man and the nose and <gasps> my mother's mouth. My mother had been gone for well over 30 years at that point. I didn't even know I remembered what her mouth looked like. But there it was. And I manipulated the picture until I could see it all at once. And there, in black and white, was a horse, and standing next to that horse was a cowboy in dirty, muddy chaps, and a mud-stained coat, and a sweat-stained cowboy hat, smiling back at me with my mother's mouth. And I had my connection. That was my daddy, Pete. He was a cowboy. I'm his granddaughter. Now, the song, the first time I heard the song after learning the story of Daddy Pete and finding out that Grandma Hazel, although she still loved him, just didn't get the whole cowboy thing, I knew I'd never hear it again or sing it again without thinking of Daddy Pete. The song is Night Rider's Lament by Michael Burton. <clears throat> Graveyard shift midnight till dawn. The moon was as bright as a reading light or a letter from an old friend back home. He said last night I run on to Jenny. She's married and has a good life. Boy, you sure missed the track. Perfect professional's wife 
never seen a hawk on the wing I've never seen a spring at the grave divide and I've never heard old camp pookie sing That's the first person I've had yodel on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you can yodel. So that's, how, yeah. how does a person go about learning how to yodel? A lot of time alone in the car. I mean, a lot of time. I'm in my day job. I'm a sales rep for my brother's company, and before that, I drove to Decatur every day to work, and so I had a lot of alone time in the car <laughs> and put on different set CDs. Um, a lot of writers in the sky and uh, and various other groups at yodel mm -hmm. and um, just keep doing it until you can stand your stand yourself <laughs> but you have to do it alone you can't do oh, it yeah. with, with your family oh around. no no no, just, no. Yeah. They, they'll they'll put you out the house really quick kind of like fiddle playing <laughs> a lot know, like fiddle playing fiddle. <laughs> it sounds yeah it sounds like you're killing cats until you finally figure out until what you you're get doing those notes as they as they go up what I mean, can you explain how it works? How, what is the kind the of... The mechanism, mechanism in your throat is called the epiglottis. And the term is called stroking the epiglottis, which doesn't sound like a very nice <laughs> thing to say. But it, it, it's, in a woman's voice, it's called the flip. And it's, it's where you go from one voice register up to the next. And normally, you try to do that smoothly. But when you're yodeling, you're trying to hit that point and go up and the trick is when you hit that point getting the right note when you get up yeah. <laughs> above it kind of a slide up or just actually just trying to you jump up i mean yeah. you hit the, it's it's hard to to you're it's you, you start out you're, you're going hey oh 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 and you're trying to you gotta it's those both notes mm -hmm. but you got to hit that little pop in the middle to jump up uh -huh. to it so it's kind of a vocal exercise, mm -hmm. like <clears throat> like singers kind of go. Yeah, these exercises. a lot like that. And I found out that the su the surgery they do for sleep apnea, they take out the epiglottis. Oh, so you can't yodel that. So I better not get sleep apnea. <laughs> I just <laughs> well, mess 